Hi, welcome to part three of my series on how to take photographs of garden birds. If you've not seen my other videos, I've put links below in the descriptions so you can go and watch the first video which talks about how I set up this hide. The second video talks about how I set up the perches and what feed I put out. The first thing is to not expect too much once you've set up your hide to begin with because the birds have got to get used to the new setup and feeding. Now my feeding stations have been here for quite a while but in the last few days I've done quite a lot of reorganising the feeding stations. I've spent quite a bit of time working on the hide and so there's been quite a bit of disruption. So I'm not expecting a great deal of birds to show up today but over time once it settles down again and they get used to the new system I should start to see more birds. The first thing I'm going to talk about is camera settings because these are quite important if you're going to get good pictures of the birds. Firstly I mentioned the lens. The longer the lens that you've got the closer you can get to the birds and the more you can fill the frame. It's not essential to have a really long lens like this. This is a 200 to 500 lens. Um, you can do it with shorter lenses but you just don't fill the frame as much then you have to rely on more cropping which is okay if you've got a large megapixel camera and that will um, allow you to crop in but um, the, the closer you can get in camera the more detail you're going to get in the birds. Key settings that you'll need to think about is your aperture first of all that will give you depth of field. Now with a very long lens like this you can, you can still go up to something like f7.1, f8 and still blur the background as long as you've zoomed right in and the background's far enough away. If the background's quite close, then you might need to um, open the aperture maybe to something like 5.6. With this lens, I can only go as wide as 5.6 anyway. Then you need to consider shutter speed. I really wouldn't want to go much below 200th of a second just to make sure I freeze the birds. And if, the, if it's bright enough, the faster you can get the shutter speed, the better. With this lens, there is a vibration reduction which does help keep the lens steady. So I have that on and it just helps to keep the, the shot more stable. The final setting is ISO. And a lot of people will have their ISO so it floats. So the, the ISO is decided by the camera. And I, obviously, again, that depends on your camera to whether um, you can get good shots at higher ISO, you will know your camera better than anybody else. And you can set a limit on how high you let that um, ISO float. But again, just to get the shot, certainly on a day like this, I will need probably at least 1600 or even 2000 ISO because of the day is so dull. In the hide, I haven't got room for a tripod, which is why I put the camera on a bean bag and it keeps the camera nice and stable. Next, you need to give some consideration to how you're going to focus on the birds. Now, for the most part, an autofocus should do a good job, um, but I would tend to use a single spot um, so you can focus accurately on the bird. If you rely on a group um, of focusing points, um, then you can, you can miss the important parts and you really want to focus on the eye of the bird. There are occasions when I'm focusing on one particular perch and not panning around quite a lot of different perches that I will just set the, the focus on manual and lock it off and just wait for the bird to land on that one particular spot. Then it's a little bit more accurate and I don't spend a lot of time hunting around for different focus points. If I do have a locked off focus point, then what I also sometimes use is a remote trigger. It fires the shutter without me having to move the camera at all. And I found that been to be very successful when I've pre-focused and I know where I want the birds to land. Just have a little look at how I've set up my stations today. I've got the gate that I found in video two that's set up there. I'll put a stand on it now just to make it stable. We've got the tree with the suet in the back that hopefully should attract the woodpeckers. Moving across to the, the branch, it's got suet holes in the back. Now, in the middle there is the upright tree that I found in video two, or the stump rather, not a tree. Again, I've put some holes in the back of that and a stand on it to make it um, upright. I've got the branch that I talked about in video two. I've taken a few extra branches off that just so it's, it forces the birds to land on the ones that I want them to. And then the feeders are over here. And finally, another perch that I can just get more shots of the birds from. 
Once you've got all your perches set up in the configuration that you're happy with, and you're sure that you've got clear sight lines with nothing behind, then it's a case of sitting in the hide and waiting. Bird photography takes an awful lot of patience. It requires sitting around for long periods of time, just waiting for the bird to come because they're wild animals at the end of the day. They won't perform for you how you want them to. You can give them some encouragement to go into the places that you want, but there's no guarantee that you'll get what you want. I might take a little bit of footage while I'm just taking some pictures of the birds, but I'm gonna to have to sit here now because I've made quite a bit of noise while I've been filming. I'll need to start being a bit quieter. Um, try not to move too much, um, try not to bang too much. Um, when you're moving the camera around, don't whip it around like this because that will, uh, that, the birds will notice and they will get scared. So try and move the camera very slowly if you're moving from one perch to another, just to make sure that the birds don't get too scared. But it's, it's all about patience from this point on. This is where the fun actually starts. Everything's set up, I'm nice and comfortable in the hide, and so it's just a case of looking out and enjoying the birds. I've turned off the big working light now, um, just so I can stand a little bit better chance of catching the birds. They have started to appear a little bit more now. What I really want is to catch the tree creeper that I've seen over the last few days. It's going to take quite a little bit of waiting for. I'm not expecting to see him today because I've done a lot of making noise and I've done a lot of reorganising outside. But over the next few days and even weeks, hopefully the birds will start to get a lot more used to um, the new setup and start to come. So I'm going to start to take a few pictures and I'll see you again in a minute. Hope you've enjoyed those photographs. Um, I've spent about an hour and a half taking them all together. I did have quite a few interesting sightings. I had a jay that you've seen, and I did get the woodpecker pop along for about two seconds, but then went off as soon as he heard the camera shutter go. What I really need to do now is let the whole thing settle down a little bit more, let the birds get used to the new setup, and hopefully they'll start to visit again in bigger numbers. Hope you've enjoyed that video today, and. That's the end of my three part series. The next video is gonna be my hunt for the tree creeper. Um, I'm gonna wait and wait. It may take a day, it may take a week, it may take a month for him to pop up while I'm just sat here with a camera. I have seen him three times over the last week, so hopefully I'll be able to take that photograph um, before very long. If you do have any questions, please, drop them below in the comments and if you've enjoyed this series of videos then subscribe to my channel for more things like this and hopefully i'll see you soon <laughs>